Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the cool guns that are coming up for sale in their 2015 uh, June Regional Auction. And often at an auction like this we get a chance to take a look at a, a wide variety of guns. You know, we don't get, normally we don't get to see a whole lot of variations of something all in the same place. And when I find a family of guns that are real interesting, I like to try and take advantage of that here. Well, here's one that I found today. We have four of about nine different variants that we can show you. And this is the strange and sad story of the Dutch Mannlicher carbine. So the Dutch Army adopted a Turnbolt Mannlicher rifle, um, uses a five round end block clip, uh, caliber is 6.5 by 53 and a half Dutch. It's a, a perfectly adequate cartridge, um, very similar to all the other Continental 6.5s. And the Dutch Army adopted a standard long rifle, which is also very much like the other Continental rifles, and then they got into carbines, and that's where things kind of got weird. Uh, they had four different carbines when they first adopted the, the gun, the design. They wanted a carbine for each different service, so they had the number one carbine, which was for cavalry. They had the number two carbine, which was for uh, rural and military police. They had the number three carbine, which was for engineer and artillery troops. And then they had the number four carbine for bicycle troops. And all of these guns had to be a little bit different. They all used the same ammo, they were all the same overall length, they all had the same clips, they all had the same action, but they differed in things like um, how the stock was configured, where the sling swivels were. In some cases this is legitimate. For example, cavalry troops would carry the rifle flat across the back, so they'd use sling swivels on the side of the gun, where artillery troops are going to carry the rifle like a normal long gun, or carry the carbine like a normal long gun. So artillery troops are going to have sling swivels on the bottom. Now, this is fine, you know, they can produce four different versions, it's not that big a deal, until of course World War I rolls around. Now the Dutch stayed neutral in World War I, and about, by December of 1917 the, the military was getting nervous, and so they, the military hierarchy went and looked at this and said, look, we've got four different carbines, we're really manufact we're trying to, to manufacture a lot, and this is wonky and stupid. Can we just consolidate these? Let's maybe let how about one carbine? Can we do just one carbine? Um, but of course, none of the services wanted to give up their different options. So the cavalry didn't want to deal with the long bayonet that the artillery used. And the mounted police, or the rural police, the military police, had a folding bayonet, and they really wanted to keep that. They, they weren't willing to go to anyone else's bayonet, and, and it, this is just stupid. They ended, up, they ended up initially trying to consolidate from four down to three, but no one was willing to do that. So what they did instead was they decided to make four new models of carbine, and they would try and standardize the parts. So they'd still have four different variants, but maybe they'd all use the same exact parts, and so they'd only have to you know, stock two different kinds of uh, say stock, upper hand guards, but the sling swivels would be the same sling swivel, just mounted in different places. And that would legitimately simplify things. Well, of course they were never able to fully transition over to the new carbines, so what they ended up with was they had the old models one through four, and now they also had the new models one through four. And in 1938 someone discovered that they were really lacking in carbines for uh, mounted artillery troops and for anti-aircraft troops, and so they actually came up with number five carbine. So they had a total of now nine different carbines in service. And then of course we also, this, this is just the, the continental Dutch army, we also have the colonial Dutch army, which had four or five of its own version of carbines, for a grand total of 13 or 14 different carbines, not including things like trainers. So this makes it kind of a an odd group to try to study, and what makes it a little bit odder is these carbines have some weird elements that you don't see anywhere else. A good example of that, we'll start here, this is a number one old model carbine, and it has this piece of wood on top of the magazine, but only on one side. No wood here, we do have wood here. That's because this was meant for cavalry troops, and they would carry it across the back, so we've got sling swivels on the side, in this case we have a fixed sling swivel on the front, it's just a solid loop. Our rear sl sling swivel actually rotates, that was a unique part not used anywhere else. And then because this is against the cavalry trooper's back, they wanted to protect the magazine well so they put this piece of wood on it. That's the old model number one. When they revised this, they came out with the new model number one, 
They put an upper handguard on it because that was becoming standard. They left it with a piece of wood on the one side of the magazine, but not the other. And you can see they now have a normal sling swivel in the front. And they took a normal swivel and put it in the back, but they put it at a 45 degree angle. So again, this is going to carry across a cavalry trooper's back, like so. Now, we don't have any of the number two guns here, nor unfortunately do we have any of the folding bayonets, which would be cool to show you. What we do have, though, is an old model number three carbine. So this would have been for artillery and engineer units. Because these guys are not carrying the guns across their backs, they're just slinging them like a normal rifle. You don't have to put a piece of protective wood on the magazine, so they didn't. The sling swivels are on the bottom of the stock. And these are both the same type of, of swivel, uh, same swivels that you'd have on uh, the number one guns. Now, one of the weird distinctive features of a number of the Dutch carbines is that they have this upper handguard that goes significantly farther than the lower handguard. Why? Not entirely sure. Obviously, it's to protect the barrel. Um, nobody else that I'm aware of did something that looked quite that goofy, but there you go. Now, this is the old model number three, again, for uh, artillery or engineers. And when they replaced those with a new model number three, they cut that handguard down so it only went to the front band. So it looks a little bit less goofy. But they didn't do that on all the models. So our new model number three here, again, has sling swivels on the bottom, it does not have any protective wood on the magazine well, and it has an upper handguard that's been cut down short. So there's the, the detail on these Dutch Mannlicher carbines that you have to memorize if you want to actually put together a good collection of them and understand what specifically they are. It really takes a while to figure out all these little nuances. Obviously, you know something like this number one old model looks like it's been sporterized, but it actually hasn't. Um, in fact, what's what's curious is you don't find this is a typical barrel band and spring, and you don't find that on any other models of these carbines. So that's a good indicative detail for a, an old model number one. And then, of course, a lot of people will look at this this piece of wood and figure something's weird with it. They figure maybe it got left off of the other side, which it didn't. Sometimes this piece of wood gets taken off by folks who think it's, well, who are sporterizing guns and decide they don't want it. You can typically tell because there are little lugs on the magazine to attach it to. Also, the bottom of the stock right here will have a wide flat spot to connect to that piece of wood where guns that don't ever have, have that, uh, the stocks are, are smooth nicely down flush to the magazine well. So one other thing that sometimes happens is people will take an old model like this and they'll decide to make it look better or sporterize it and they actually cut off part of that handguard so that it looks like a new model gun, like one of these. So a lot of details. This is only the beginning of the story of Dutch Mannlicher carbines, but I will leave it up to you guys to uh, ferret out the rest of the details if you're interested. If you'd like to add any of these guns to your own personal collection, go ahead and drop over to Rock Island Auction House. If you look in the description text below, you will see that there are links to all four of these guns. Uh, they're all part of lots because this is a regional auction. So you can go ahead and place a bid online for uh, the gun you want, plus a couple of others that it will probably be coming with. And uh, see if you can get your way through to collecting one of every one of the 14 or 15 different Dutch Mannlicher carbines. Thanks for watching, guys.